Nathan, we're locked and loaded for another TFL Talking Trucks. Yes, and I think that this one is one that you guys can identify with because we're talking about underappreciated and overappreciated trucks in terms of whether or not they appeal to you and why. Yes, so many of you have written to us and said, you know, this truck doesn't get enough attention. Right. Or this truck gets too, too much, much attention. Yes. Right. So this is why we're doing this. We're, we're going to start, like you said, with overrated, mm -hmm. totally overrated. Yeah, overrated. yeah, in many cases. <laughs> uh, and then underappreciated. Underappreciated. And then also a little bit of TBD because there's some new pickups coming out. Right. Which we haven't really tested much. Right, and so we really can't tell you whether or not they f fit on either side. I'm sure you can imagine which one's that we're going to be talking about. But before we do all that, Andre, let's talk about Patreon. Yes. Uh, many of you support us on patreon.com slash TFLcar. We love it. And this week, something very special happened. Oh, yeah? You know what? What? Uh, because Valeri B. Mm -hmm. uh, submitted a, a recurring donation of $75 Canadian. Ooh. This is huge. I think this is the biggest support from a single person we've had on Patreon. That is fantastic. Yes. Well, what is that? Com I, so it's a pro if you're wondering uh, the conversion. Yeah, that's exactly what I was wondering. Uh, Sixty-one dollars approximately. Wow! Thank you very much yes. for your uh, generosity. That is fantastic. Also, of course, we have help from John T, Richard C, and Jonathan H. Thank you, guys uh, and gals, potentially. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry. <laughs> It's hard to tell exactly no, 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 with no, no. all the you're names. You're doing just fine. Uh, because uh, Valeri, I'm not sure exactly if, if it's, it's a Valerie woman or... or yeah. yeah. So uh, we appreciate your support. Uh, it helps us do this podcast. Indeed it does. It also helps us with other projects we have for video. That is correct. Without your support, all of your support, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. Yes. So how about we start our overrated truck list mm -hmm. uh, with... Well, what, what do you think? How about this truck? How about a midsizer? Okay, so um, are you talking about the Tacoma? Yes. Yes, okay. Yes. So uh, the Toyota Tacoma mm -hmm. is currently the segment leading sales leader. By a large margin. By a huge margin in the United States. They're close. They're going to be, in 2021, Toyota is going to sell almost a quarter million Tacomas in the U.S. Now, if you compare that to the com competition, that in some cases doubles and even triples some of these other numbers. Yeah, if you're talking about Ford Ranger, yeah. uh, Chevy Colorado, they're, mm -hmm. they're kind of below it in popularity. That is correct. Um, on, in sales. Uh, you're right. But I think it's overrated. And I would agree. Now, now, when we're saying overrated, we're not saying we hate the truck. What we're basically saying is the vehicle that gets all of this you know, glamour may not necessarily deserve all of it. Yeah, and here's, here's why, okay? So uh, it was redesigned about, what, 2015, 2016. Mm -hmm. We went to that um, event. Yeah, we went to Tacoma, Washington. Yep, Andre and I both went. <laughs> to review the new Tacoma. Um, it, it, was, it was a great event. Mm -hmm. um, and a um, couple of things uh, came out of pretty quickly, right? Mm -hmm. So they have a new engine, the three and a half liter a dual injected. Back, back then, new V6. engine, yeah. Yeah, it was just coming out for that, for that truck. Also, they had a six-speed automatic and six-speed manual. Yep. The manual is actually pretty good. Actually, I like it with the exception of reverse. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and the way that the engine is made, it, the three-and-a-half liter mm -hmm. to the automatic, if, you, if that's what you're choosing, which a lot of people are, right. it's at least in Colorado at higher elevations, it was never quite matched quite right. No. Uh, one of the issues we've been having up here with those Tacomas is that they strain quite a bit. Uh, to maintain speed. It, it, they can get there, uh, and there are no rockets, but at the same time, for a mid-sized truck, they're not the most efficient, and they do strain a bit when you're there pushed, and that's something that Andre and I have both noticed. Yeah, and also maybe hunting a little bit for gear. Yeah, that too. So another thing, which not just specific to Tacoma, but a lot of mid-sized trucks, uh, often when you get the four-wheel drive, you know, the kind of the loaded model, right? Mm -hmm. The, the more expensive models like the TRD Off-Road or the Pro, the TRD Pro in this case, the payload suffers yes. quite a lot. Yeah. And it's not specific to Toyota, like I said. No, uh, every, every vehicle that has a four-wheel drive package will have a drop-off in payload and towing. So, so that's another thing. Well, a lot of people are buying them to uh, add stuff to them, you know, mm -hmm. tents and racks. Oh, tons of stuff, and, yeah. And, you know, bumpers and winches. And all of a sudden, they're finding out that after you add all this stuff, well, your payload is basically gone, yeah. right? 
So, so for those reasons, I think um, Toyota has, you know, they've done everything apparently right because mm. they are the sales leader. Right. Yet, I think it's overrated. Yeah, and I just think that there's other trucks that compete with it that are just as good, if not better, in some cases. So there's the Toyota. To and by the way, we want your um, input on this, so please add comments below. We do read them, uh, not all of them because there's thousands, but we do read them as, as many as we can. So let's go on to the next one. Andre, tell us what the next one is. The next one, how about this? How about Chevy Tahoe and or GMC Yukon? Mm. Maybe they escalate too because they're all no, they're all kind of piled into the same. Yeah, thing. they share the same platform and right. they are basically underneath the same. Okay, now why do you think that they're overrated? So, and we're not just picking on sales leaders here. No, I mean sometimes we are, <laughs> but the Chevy Tahoe and the Suburban mm -hmm. and the Yukon and to some extent the Escalade, they've been dominating their full size SUV segment for years. Yeah, I agree. And when we say dominate, I mean, sometimes in some months they're selling like 75% of all full size SUVs. Right. It's insane. Yeah. Um, and a lot of them, of course, are fleet, sometimes it's government vehicles, uh, of course, private vehicles as well uh, for consumers. But you know, it's it, it main so they just redesigned it. Mm -hmm. They put it on the independent suspension, right, right. Uh, front and back, so it's more comfortable. They really improved it. I, I think in many ways. Oh, I, I would agree. That's why this is a tough one for me to fully agree with you on because I took a uh, GMC Yukon with the diesel uh, from here to Cedar Rapids mm -hmm. and back, um, and it was one of the best road trip vehicles I've ever driven, and it got amazing gas mileage for a large luxury. SUV. It was a diesel. Yeah, it was a diesel. Yeah. But one of the issues I have, especially when I look at pricing across the board, is that these, I think that they're a little overpriced. Now, this is not even counting all the markups we're having nowadays. I just think that the pricing. Uh, MSRP. It, yeah, the MSRP yeah. is a little steep. I would agree. Uh, I mean, and, and we're hearing this from you guys as mm -hmm. well. So it's not just our perception. This but, is your input as well. Uh, your input is in here too, because it's not uncommon to see a Tahoe or Suburban at about 80000 right? Uh, with all the options, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes the Yukons go even higher because the Denali is very popular, too. It, it, it's extreme. That's yeah. their most popular, I believe. Yeah, right now. Yeah. So so a bit overpriced. Mm -hmm. I guess they can afford to do it if they're popular. Right. right? But, but once again, another thing that bother, bothers me a little bit, and I also took um, actually a Tahoe recently in California on, on a road trip, right. which was great. Um, comfortable, nice. Uh, but if I was to tow a trailer, um, the the 6.2 liter V8, the big V8 yeah, yeah. Tahoe I was driving, it's only about rated at about 8,100 pounds. Mm. So I think if you're buying a full size vehicle like this, it mm. should have a little bit more capability. Right. And then when you're talking about capability, they do have an off road capable version of the Chevy uh, Tahoe, right? We drove it before. Yeah, the Z71, the, yeah. the latest one. Right. And yeah. it's it's pretty good, but uh, judging by what Jeep has, Jeep now has a vehicle that competes directly with it, but is better off-road. The Grand Wagoneer and Wagoneer. Right. And also the, yes. Grand, and the Grand Cherokee L, yeah. I think, uh, would, would give it a run for its money as well. And these vehicles, unlike that one... Are not a specific off-road version. They already they are Jeeps with their off-road packages intact. In so, it's I just think, especially with the money that they cost, I think that that's what makes them a little overrated. Yeah. So let us know what you think. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, when you're searching for these vehicles, be in the, in any class, right? Mid-size, full-size SUV. We're going to talk about some full-size trucks. Yeah. Here, here in a second. So let, let us know. You know, how are you picking your decision? I, I, are you just going? Oh. You know, two of my neighbors have a Tahoe, so I'm going to get one too. Or, you know, what are your considerations? Are you basing it on some serious research? Are you testing them next to each other? You know, we want to know. Now, let's move on to the next one. Um, I don't know if it's on your list in the same spot that it's on mine. But Where that, do you want to go now? Uh, to an, a midsize truck. Okay. And that would be? A Jeep Gladiator. Yeah, speaking of Jeep, the Gladiator. Now, you guys, uh, if you've watched me on other channels, you know I love the Gladiator. But there's a caveat. Yes. They're extremely expensive. Even their base model. Yes, I know you get standard four-wheel drive, which is great. But it doesn't really wow me when it comes to its overall performance, especially leading up to the top trims. So all the other lower trims in terms of their ability to tow, 
uh, their ability to haul loads. Yes, they can do it and act like a pickup truck, but other pickup trucks in the class either outdo it in terms of comfort or they outdo it in terms of capacity. And yes, it is extremely good off-road, especially with the top-end versions, but if you're getting the lower-end versions, which is the ones I've been looking at, and you compare them to a lot of the other trucks that are out there, specifically ones like you know the Ford Ranger, I think the Ranger is superior in many ways until you work your way up to off-roading. Yeah, and by the way, after we're done with this a short overrated list, we'll go to the um, underappreciated. Yeah, underappreciated. And ones. so, so stay tuned. You know, uh, stay tuned for this. Uh, so, r- remember recently, or maybe it was like a, several months ago. It's hard to tell. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it, w- with COVID especially. Uh, remember, we borrowed um, kind of a basic manual transmission Gladiator. Yeah, and it was great too. Yeah. It, was, it was a lot so, of fun to drive. So it was f- had no lockers. Nope. But still, it was. Uh, if my memory serves, it was like in the low forty thousand dollar range. It was. It was with a couple of options. It had the hardtop option, and I think it had one upgrade with the interior, maybe the stereo or something like that. Yeah, and, and that it was, was pushing it. forty. It was right. starting to push forty. And and even though it had the manual transmission, and if you look, yes, they can. Start in the low 30s, that's what they say, but, and this is without markups and all that, just in general, with just a couple package options, you're suddenly cruising up to the mid 30s to the high 30s on a very basic pickup truck. And that is where I think one of the biggest discrepancies comes in between that truck and other trucks it competes against that are far less expensive and give you a lot more for your money. And then on the flip side, it's really hard to find one of those. <laughs> yeah. Right? Uh, we were lucky. It was at the local uh, store. No, he's referring ju- to the manual base, near base model. Or base model. Because if you go to any, most dealerships, mm-hmm. you will see Rubicons, Mojave versions. Of right, it. exactly. Uh, even Saharas. A lot of Saharas, too. High altitude versions, mm-hmm. you know, luxury machines. Right. Um, so, and, and they're pushing, you know, 60, 65,000 right. for midsize. Exactly. Midsize. And, and people are buying them. You know, you, you, you can, you know, pare them down a bit. But in this case, people are just putting out ridiculous money for these gladiators. And the other thing about a gladiator, and it is a little bit of a negative, if you are serious about off-roading, they're very, very long. They have a very long wheelbase. And we've had problems in the past with high centering these tr- uh, trucks. And, you know, there are other trucks out there that compete with it that have a slightly different setup and don't high center as easily. Yeah. And so what people also do is they put lifts um, Jeep uh, and Stellantis is very good at this. Oh, you yeah. know, they, they provide some Mopar accessories. Well, we, we lifted our own uh, Gladiator. When yeah, we had, it. we had a 2020 Gladiator, uh-huh. um, and there's videos on TFL Off-Road and TFL Truck about this. Yep. Um, and two-inch lift does wonders. Yeah. But once again, it's additional cost. Oh, yeah. It, the, the lift costs money. The bigger tires cost money, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not cheap to do this. No, not at all. And so it, it's we're not trying to n- knock it down for anything other than the fact that it's just a very pricey vehicle for what you get and that it seems to overshadow the competition just because of the popularity of the vehicle. All right, let's move on. How about uh, we go to a particular engine ah, in a yes. particular truck? Oh, yes. Now, this yes. one... We've talked a lot of smack about, and we know <laughs> because we've actually had one, and that would be the Ram with its e-torque setup. And the e-torque, you want to explain what it is, basically? Yeah, it's a mild hybrid system, mm-hmm. so it's not, it's really not anything like the F one fifty hybrid, right? Um, that's currently out, and the Tundra hybrid that's coming next year, right? Um, it's basically a serpentine, um, an electric motor under the hood mm-hmm. of the truck that's connected to the drive line via a serpentine belt. Right. And it helps, or it's, at least it's supposed to help. I, I think it, it scoots you off the line a little tiny bit. So yeah, it provides start stop. So mm-hmm. when you come to a complete stop, it actually helps to smooth out those transitions because it actually has torque yep. itself. Um, and it also f- is supposed to fill in some gaps, you know, when you're shifting gears, supposed to give you a little push off the line. Right. Tiny push, I mean, tiny. Tiny little um, push. So. So initially, they introduced it in 2019, mm-hmm. right? It's on their V6 engines and also V8 engines. Right. Um, and at first, you know, it was a very curious system. Yeah. We even purchased a Rem Rebel with it. Yeah, we had the 5.7 with the, uh, the e-torque system. Yeah. And, and then we kind of quickly figured out or found out after driving it for a year or more. Mm-hmm. We, we kept it for a long time. Yeah, we had that for a while. And we put, I want to say at least... 15,000 miles mm-hmm. in that year, or maybe a little, a little bit more. Yeah. Um, it wasn't really providing extra efficiency no. in the real world for us, mm-hmm. and it wasn't any faster. 
No, we drove that thing back and forth to Las Vegas, back and forth to Moab, back and forth to several locations, including uh, Wyoming a few times. I mean, several places. We put a lot of miles on that truck in a short amount of time, and we didn't see any gains in fuel mileage. And that was really the whole point of the e-torque system. Now, we did also have the e-torque system connected to another vehicle we owned, which was a Jeep. That was the uh, Jeep Wrangler. Right, with a two-liter engine. That had the yeah. two-liter turbo and this e-torque. Now, that one we expected better things out of. Unfortunately, the entire powertrain was just not great. It just We just had issues, um, re- reliability issues. With yeah, that it's system. it spent a lot of time in yeah. the shop, frankly. Um, so, so, yeah, that's... and. And on the flip side, if you look at the Ram trucks, I mean, they're beautiful. Oh, yeah. Right? Design is great. The interiors interior, are fantastic. Exterior design, mm-hmm. uh, capabilities on par with, with others. Hell yeah. In many uh, yeah. respects. The TRX is out. Well, that's kind of separate, right? The, the, yeah. um, but they have aged engines. The Panther Star has been around for many, many years. Yeah, it's almost as old as Tommy. Uh, the, the V8 Hemi, as good as it is, has also been around oh, for yeah. many, many years. So, so there's not like there's not a lot of innovation in that space in, in under the hood. No, and now the rumor has it that they are working really hard on electrification, and that's including with their trucks. And we're going to see some big changes in the near future. But put rumor aside, what do they have right now available on lots? Well, they have e-torque in almost all of their powertrains, or available for most of their powertrains for trucks. And we're not really seeing the gains that we were expecting to see with any of them, as far as we can tell. So I think eTorque may have been not an abysmal failure, but a bit of a failure. Yeah, and also it, initially it was an upcharge, mm-hmm. and then it kind of decreased. And it's now almost no extra money so to get eTorque. It's standard, basically, in, in many it's, other it's, tracks. Yeah, except you can get it or you can skip it. <laughs> so yeah. It's an option, uh, if you can find it. Right, so, so, um, so yeah, that's a bit of an issue. And how about we finish the overrated list? Yeah, this is an interesting uh, one. Uh, uh, with this truck. Yes, hit it. Ford Raptor. And F-150 FX4. Yes, so both. Uh, kind of, uh, we, I want to talk about both. Yeah, go for it. So the F-150, um, let's talk about the Raptor first. Mm-hmm. So I recently went to the event. Um, it was near Las Vegas mm-hmm. for the new third generation truck. And it, it's good. So... Uh, the improved interior obviously is new because it's a new generation of the right. truck. The exterior was an evolution. It, it wasn't greatly changed. Um, if you look, if you look at the the third generation Raptor next to a second gen, um, just by themselves, mm-hmm. most people may not under- realize it's a newer truck. You yeah, know, we know. You and I know. Yeah, we know immediately. Uh, but then again, we we stead- study we, this. We do this now, but but a regular person may not understand. Right. That. So I, I don't think it was differentiated enough. Okay. Uh, then they did something great with their 37 package. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- they put 37 inch tall tires from the factory, and I drove that truck also. Right. And and it's really, um, you know, it makes you feel behind the wheel. It makes you feel kind of like a king because you're sitting higher yeah. than most. Uh, you, you you almost feel invincible. Yeah, in yeah, and, and they managed to uh, change some of the suspension geometry in order to make those 37s work. Yeah, and they modified shocks. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of work. Uh, also, uh, there's still, most of them are, you know, the MSRPs are high. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 37 package, as nice as it is, is, well, they say initially it's $7,500 for that package. Whew. But it's really more like fourteen thousand because you have to buy other uh, options other in options order to, get to it. lead up to it. Typical um, Ford, by the way. So, so by the time you're done, you're at like eighty-two thousand on a Raptor. This is MSRP, yeah. by the way, uh, on a, on a new Raptor, and you still don't have a V8. Yeah, so which one is of, a lot of enthusiasts I, really asked for. That is one of the biggest things that uh, you know you guys have mentioned, and, and I agree with you. Um, when this new Raptor came out, everybody was expecting the Coyote to be supercharged or something like that, right? And first of all, the answer was no. And second of all, the powertrain was pretty similar to the one it replaced. And a lot of people felt a little let down because they had this truck that now had 37s as an option with a beefier suspension, all new interior, all this stuff, yet it wasn't as powerful. Now, we know the Raptor R is coming out, and we're hearing rumors about powertrains and all that. We'll find out very soon about that, by the way. Yeah, but not officially yet. Not officially yeah. yet. Right. And so, yes, it is 
a little bit of a letdown. And as such, that's how it uh, wound up on and, the overrated. Yeah, and also um, another point is a lot of people buy it and don't use it the way it's meant to be used. Well, yeah. Right. And that kind of goes for a lot of off road trucks. Yeah, the same with the TRX. Uh, yeah. So, you know, you may buy it as a status symbol. You may buy it because it makes you feel great. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but will you go to Baja? Will you go to the desert or off road anywhere? Maybe not. Yeah. But the, and that that's that depends on the owner. That's not the fault of the truck. Um, but let's talk about the FX4. Why did you add this to the list? Uh, because I own one. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> well, no. So, Here's FX4, and to some extent, I would even include like a Chevy Z71 package in this okay. for Silverados. Um, and um, yeah, I would I would put both of those. I in would this agree category. with you add, to add the Chevy uh, Z71 be, because here's the reason: it's not very expensive mm -hmm. to get an FX4 or a Z71 package uh, either on the Silverado or the FX4 in the Ford. The Ford costs about a thousand dollars, right? It gives you a rear locker, which I like. Uh, which, which, um, and then they say they tune the suspension specifically for the FX4. Mm -hmm. You don't get any suspension lift, yeah. And you get supposedly um, a little bit more aggressive off-road tire, but in my case, it's really a street all-season tire. It really is. I mean, yes. and you off-roaded with that thing, and it, you know, to prove a point, it kind of went. It, it, it did it, what it was asked I, to do. I, for I grabbed it by the scruff of its neck. Yeah, and I. Pushed it. Um, I actually was pretty impressed with not only your ability, but the truck's ability, considering the fact that it's not sitting that high. It has that huge spoiler up front or the lip, uh, you know, the chin yes. thing. And it has basically street tires. So all that I can understand is a bit of a letdown, knowing that you've got their FX4 package. However, you do get the rear locker, which I think is huge. Yeah, so that's, I don't know if that's what, I mean, that could be worth a thousand bucks. I would say by it itself. Is. Yeah. Uh, but if you're if you're buying, I just this is kind of like an announcement. Yeah, or, please. Uh, if you're buying FX4 because you think you know it's going to be incredible, that's not the case. You're buying the locker, really. Yeah. Suspension is about the same. I mean, it's hard to ascertain suspension difference. Right, and there's no lift. There's no lift. There's no extra clearances. Um, so uh, and the same thing kind of goes for Z71. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the only other great part about those packages is that you can get them across the board. You can get them on a luxury truck. You right. can get them on a base truck like mine. Um, so that's okay. And you even get a sticker. You get a sticker. So you're basically buying a sticker and a locker. <laughs> that's about well, right. I, and I and then the, G you have the G80 it. locker uh, for the Chevy, yes. which isn't even the same type of locker as the Ford. Right. That one is a mechanical locker that works all on its own. And it's okay. Uh, but there is a lot of wheel spin that is associated with those um, lockers. Yes. So... Either way, you're basically, yeah, stickers on a locker are sort of the whole thing. Which is why I'm also very, very happy that both Ford and now GM and others, they're going to other packages. Yeah. Uh, now Ford is offering F-150 Tremor, mm -hmm. which we reviewed, and that's, and that's a solid truck. That thing was a home run, really solid truck, almost too good. Yeah, if you don't add every option, it actually makes sense. Yes. Once you add every option, and you, then it you're doesn't make sense at anymore. Seventy grand. Yeah. That it stops making sense. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, but the Trail Boss is pretty good, even though it still doesn't have a selectable locker. Yeah, the but Trail it, Boss it, is pretty good. The suspension is really well sorted. Yeah. The tires. Yeah, that, that's that's a, it's a good truck too. So so that's why I wanted to put the FX4 and the Raptor here. Okay, so how about we switch gears? Sorry for the pun, and we talk about the underrated trucks because now in this case. We are talking once again about pickup trucks and SUVs, and we feel that these vehicles don't get a lot of love, even though we know that they're quite good, and many of you do as well. We get a lot of emails from you and also comments saying, well, what about this truck and what about that truck? And you didn't bother mentioning that, and Ford pays your salary or whatever. So in this case, we're going to talk about these vehicles, and we just don't think they get a lot of love. Yeah, exactly. So how about we start with this one um and this is actually all new uh -huh. how about the nissan frontier for 2022 it's a funny thing now first of all i think that they knocked it out of the park with the exterior design i think it looks great i know some of you go oh no it looks like a tacoma up close it doesn't to me maybe there's that one little kink in the rear door that kind of looks a little tacoma ish but the rest of that vehicle they did a really good job reskinning it and giving it what i think is a very attractive exterior and then they went and did the same thing with the interior which is now one of the best in class for mid-sized trucks i stand by that very very well sorted interior and then they've got that i think fantastic 3.8 liter v6 
That thing, it, it's in its class for a non-turbo. It is one of the most powerful. And it has the most horsepower, not the best torque. Yeah, but the most but, horsepower. But most horse, and which you can really feel around town, especially up here in Colorado where you think you're going to lose it all. And then it has that nine speed automatic transmission, which is a huge improvement over their former, was it five speed automatic yeah, they had? Yeah. And just, it's just such a good little truck. And the thing is, you know, I saw a little bit of fanfare for it when it came out. But if you look now, like go to SEMA, or if you look at any of the articles that are out there, a majority of those articles are still talking about the Tacoma when you have this Frontier out there. And I think that the Frontier deserves a little bit more love. Yeah, and actually we will be testing more. Uh, we ha- we're going to get another Frontier just in a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll be doing our 2022 TFL Top Truck Challenge. Right. Where we're going to be comparing some of the all-new trucks in more ways than we've done already. And while there are components on that truck that are from last year or from earlier, it is basically an all-new truck, and we're going to call it that. Yeah, and and also, here's another thing. It also brings pretty good value. Mm -hmm. Uh, While I think I agree with you, Nathan, on the points you just mentioned, Yeah, um, I think they really improved the interior. Mm -hmm. The exterior design is new, obviously. They redesigned the suspension. Uh, Roman and I towed with it a little bit in Utah. Yeah, at the event. It was very solid. Yeah. Um, and I think the boat we told was about 6,000 pounds, uh, which is considerable. Yeah. Now, it doesn't have the highest tow rating. In fact, it's one of the lower tow ratings in its class. Right. But when you guys did tow with it, you guys had no problem. It was really solid. So it also offers good value. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can buy a fully loaded Pro 4X uh, Frontier at around 44 grand. Uh-huh. 44 grand. We were talking about the Gladiator starting, you know, in 30s and easily going to 65. Yep, yep. A friend of mine has a Gladiator who, that he paid a little over 54. Yeah. And that's just So too reas- much. reasonably, a uh, really good value here. Yeah, I agree. Uh, relatively speaking. I, I think they could have done more. I agree. Uh, you know, uh, so maybe they will. Maybe next year uh, they're going to surprise us with a new powertrain or something else. Hybrid or electric uh, or something. Yeah, hybrid, maybe a few more options, maybe a, a warrior that sits a little bit higher or something like We've that. We've heard rumors, but we yeah. haven't seen anything concrete So yet. I think they could do more, but still very underappreciated. Truck. I agree with you 100% on that. So let's move on to the next one. How about this one? Uh, this uh, When we were discussing and building this list, I wasn't sure about this one. Uh, the Toyota Sequoia. Mm, I'm sure about it. You are? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, first of all, now it's about to be, uh, we're close to getting a new Sequoia. Um, mm-hmm. And I have a feeling that new Sequoia is going to fill the gap that was left in our hearts uh, <laughs> when the uh, Land Cruiser went away. Yes. I think they're trying to make it a little bit more off-road capable. And so maybe it'll help. But, you know, we've had, oh, God, probably over a dozen Sequoias in, since TFL started. Maybe even two, maybe even like 20, you know, tons. The thing about them is that they're not the prettiest on the outside or on the inside, but they are comfortable. They're rock solid, super reliable. Mm -hmm. When you go on a Craigslist or any of those things, if you're looking for a used one, they have like 250,000 miles and it's like, oh, okay, it's just getting broken in. You know, they have so much going for them in terms of just being a comfortable, solid, reliable vehicle that is your family friend. And they don't sell a lot of them. And you know what? That's one of the last uh, Toyota vehicles that's partially handmade. Yeah, and I think maybe that's why they don't sell a lot of them, because mm. they just don't have a lot of capacity, potentially, mm. to build them. Yeah. Um, and that's where my hitch was, because if you look at the sales numbers, they're really down. Yeah, they are. I mean, if you compare it to the Tahoes, the Expeditions, and some others, uh, wow. Yeah. It's dramatically lower volume. Yeah, but considerably lower. I agree with you. Reliability is insane. Um, some of the older ones had the 4.7 liter V8. Those things go forever. The million mile engine, basically. Potentially. Potentially, in yeah. theory. Uh, we've seen some Tundras with a million miles. I've, I've actually seen some Sequoias nearly there, too. Uh, yeah, the, and I've actually, um, our editor, Case, uh-huh. his roommate has an se- older Sequoia. Yeah. And, <laughs> and he wishes it would die, and it just won't. It doesn't. No. And it just keeps going and going, approaching like 300,000 miles or something. I took one of those from Los Angeles to Las Vegas and then from there to Salt Lake City and then back and um, and did a little bit of off-roading with it. It's not a great off-roader, even with their – they have a TRD package on the new one, and it's okay. But it does the job. It, it, there's a lot of electronic nannies. That's the negative. But on the positive, it's comfortable, really, really comfortable. We towed um, a small trailer that probably weighed about 4,000 pounds, I'd say, give or take. No problem. It just does it. Uh, it's not as advanced as any of these other ones, but 
what I think people forget is that this thing is just a good old fashioned SUV. And if you think about the tech that's on it, that tech goes back 20 years and more. And yeah, whereas and in these other ones are very new trucks. And it still has the 5.7 V8, right. uh, the Toyota V8. And the Sequoia continues for 2022. Mm -hmm. So currently you can build one on their website. Right. Um, it's still relatively affordable, actually. Yeah, it, it really uh, does undercut yeah. a lot of the other guys. Uh, we will be talking about another one that super undercuts yeah. these guys. Yeah. But it's a really solid truck, and I just think people overlook it. And the great news, like you said, for 2023, at least that's the current rumor, a model year, uh, probably a year from now, we'll have an all-new Sequoia, yep. which should be built in bigger, vol larger volumes, mm -hmm. and it should be. It may still be underappreciated, <laughs> but I think they will increase their sales in a big way. I'm I'm pretty damn sure about that. It's just a question of what they decide to go with in terms of what's going to underpin it, which we have a pretty good idea of, you know, considering what the Tundra is now. Well, here's another one that's underappreciated, which is in the same class. The Nissan Armada. Hell yeah, that is a really well bolted together vehicle. People overlook it. It is, I believe, for the base model, the least expensive in its class. If you look at two-wheel drive models, mm -hmm. right? Two-wheel drive yeah. models. But even some of the well-equipped models, four-wheel drive, you still get standard components like their really cool infotainment system. That is standard throughout the line, and it is a nice big screen. These vehicles... I think that the Sequoia might have a slightly better ride in general, but these vehicles tow really well. They have that fantastic 5.6 liter V8. Mm -hmm. They do have the older seven speed automatic transmission. I still don't know why Nissan hasn't gone to the nine speed, but it works on that truck particularly well. And it's so good that, you know, they have the Infiniti QX80, which is Infiniti, one of their better selling vehicles. Mm -hmm. And that is still out there on that same platform sharing many of the components. I just think that, you know, if you want a really good tow vehicle that can hold seven or even eight, I think, people, yeah, it's one that's totally underappreciated. Yeah, so we recently had one. Mm -hmm. We had a 2022 Armada uh, with the Midnight Package, I think they call it, mm -hmm. which is kind of blacked out badging and um, grills and some other But accents. it was all white otherwise. Yeah, it, it was, looked like pretty, a stormtrooper. I thought it was really good looking. Really yeah. good looking. This is the latest iteration. You know, Which they had, changed the front end. And the rear end a little bit. Yeah, and the rear end a little bit. And the interior is much nicer. Much, much better. Uh, yeah. yeah, and it almost feels like an Infinity in some ways. I mean, it, That's it, it's, my point. Yeah. I think it is like an Infinity. Yeah, and it's always like a vault. You yeah. get into it and you go down the road and you're like, Wow, yeah. this, this is a solid vehicle. Andre was off-roading with it, and the video is coming out very soon. Yes. And uh, I was off-roading in a different vehicle following him, and where I was doing the head toss thing back and forth, I just saw Andre just go, do, 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 do. I could see him clearly through the glass, and you were just totally relaxed and having a great ride while I was being kind of slammed around on the ride that I was in. It is a great riding vehicle. Obviously, not the most efficient. Uh, it's probably one of its biggest issues is the yeah. fact that it just it's, it swells gas. So does the uh, Toyota Sequoia. we just talked yeah. about. Yeah. yeah. But, and it's not the most advanced. There's, de you know, you look at Ford and General Motors for the most advanced. But it's easier, I think, to get your hands on one of those, especially if you're looking for a little bit of a discount by comparison. And they're really, really solid trucks. And remember... It's based on the Nissan Patrol, which has been around for a very long time. Around the world. Around yes. the world. And, I mean, the Armada could be a little bit better. Um, the off-road versions of it, you know, the tires are not as aggressive. Mm -hmm. There is a kind of a sidestep and a front chin that are not as aggressive as, you know, maybe some others. So it could get it could improve uh, if they could just do like a, a package an off-road package. A Pro Four X. Could you Armada. imagine that? I would love that. Yes. I would absolutely love. Well, it. they don't have an Xterra anymore, right? Right, exactly. A, 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 and they don't have, and the new uh, Pathfinder is a little bit more crossovery mm -hmm. than off-roady. So, yeah, it's better than it used to be, but but yeah. th that's not on this list. The the whole point here is that it's so there's so much potential there. And I haven't even seen that many people really uh, play with those things with aftermarket components, and I would love to see that. They're really, really solid trucks, guys, and they're really well put together. So it is underappreciated. Uh, how about we go to another SUV yes. and then round out this with a couple trucks? Sounds good. So the other SUV that's underappreciated in some ways is the Ford Expedition. Hell yes. Yes. So it was recently redesigned, what, a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. uh, new generation. They just facelifted it, basically, updated it for 2022. Right. 
Uh, and so they were in V8 land. Mm -hmm. Now they're in the EcoBoost V6. They've been doing land. EcoBoost for a little while. Yeah. Um, but they're, in, they're, they're doing the better EcoBoost now, the newer yeah. ones. And now more high powered EcoBoost. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So 400 horsepower is. is really within reach in this SUV. Not only that, but they're relatively efficient. We took one, and we had a fun video that none of you guys really watched, actually video series, where Andre and I went to California, and um, Mike and uh, Mr. Truck went to Chicago, and or Illinois. It was the Great American Race. It was the Great American <laughs> Race, and we, got, we were lucky. We got our hands on the uh, Ford. Yeah, Big expedition. Ford. So we went L.A. to Denver, uh -huh. right? And they went Chicago to Denver. That's correct. Yeah. So we both came back, well, to Boulder, actually. Yeah. And when we drove, we took it uh, first on the highway, a lot of highway driving. And then we took it to Moab and went off-road with it. And it had the uh, off-road package. Yeah, the F4. And it did great for a big, heavy truck. Yet it still had a sublime ride on the highway. And when you look at the sales numbers, it really does trail uh, for well, for GM, sorry, yeah. and I, I think it deserves a little bit better because it's really well put together. They've actually done a great job with its power. Its power is magnificent, and it's relatively efficient, and it tows well. Yeah, and of course, I mean they struggle with a little bit of what Tahoe struggles with is the higher luxury models are very expensive. Oh yeah, uh, because you can reach eighty, eighty two, eighty three thousand in an expedition, but if you don't go there. Uh, they have, you know, X XLT, mm -hmm. some of the other models that are, and I think we were in XLT FX4. If yeah, I we weren't right. even in the fully loaded one. No, no, Not even close. we didn't want it. No. You know, that was the one. Yeah. Uh, it was a little bit more affordable. I think it was like in the 50, upper 50s maybe. Right. Uh, lower 60s, um, if I remember right. And yeah, yeah, I think it deserves more sales. It does. It, I think it's a really good SUV that deserves a little bit more love. And I'm sure Ford's going to be updating that truck really soon. Yeah, and also uh, they just uh, gave it the new Timberline edition, right? Mm -hmm. um, and also it tows not now the best, but it was near the top always. Uh, 9,300 pounds in a two-wheel drive and about 9,100 pounds in a Which is still drive, exceptional. Which is more than a Tahoe yeah. uh, by quite a bit, uh, by about 1,000 pounds. So, so yeah, I, I think it needs more love. Speaking of a vehicle that should get more love but doesn't, uh, should we move on uh, to the not truck? The pickup that's uh, not a pickup? Uh, what do you mean? I'm talking about Honda. Oh, the Ridgeline. Yeah. Yes. This this truck needs more love. It's an interesting... Or pickup. Pickup. I only call them... I call them crossover pickups yes. or crossover truck. You know, I, I can't say truck because you guys get mad. The thing about the Honda Ridgeline is that, yes, we do know that it is... It shares components with minivans and other vehicles like that. They, it does have a subframe. It is a brilliant little day-to-day -day driver that can haul. Actually, it has a payload that outperforms a lot of other uh, mid-sized trucks. Yes, it is not great off-road. It's okay in mild to medium, I would say, off-roading. But once you really push it, then you're going to hurt it. It's just not quite built for that, but it can do light off-roading quite well. But it does everything else exceptionally well, even towing. Uh, yeah, okay, only 5,000 pounds, but... We've done it, full load, and it did great. And the utility is, you can't match it. It is the most utilitarian vehicle out there in its class. And that, I, I will take anybody on if they try to argue that point. It just does a lot. So here's the thing. We recently, uh, Roman and I had an opportunity to compare four mid-size uh, pickups mm -hmm. in Texas at the, at the rodeo. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, this was a surprise to me, even, even though I knew that the Ridgeline is comfortable on the highway. Oh, yeah. I knew that going in because yeah. we've tested them uh, over the years. Uh, I knew that it was kind of wide and it's actually comfortable oh, yeah. on the interior. Mm -hmm. um, great comfort. It was the quickest midsize truck we tested. So Was it, it faster than the Ford? The Ford Ranger wasn't there. Okay, see, so I'm I, sure I, the Ranger is the fastest. I have to qualify this. Yeah, that's not every midsizer was there. We tested it against the Tacoma, the Frontier, yep. mm -hmm. and the Gladiator. Yes. So those three trucks had the V6 gas engines. So you would think that would be great, right? Right, but they have heavy frames. Heavy frames, heavy four-wheel drive systems, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And here comes Ridgeline. Doo -doo -doo. Also, Ridgeline, 
uh, compared to all those, had more payload by far. I think it was like about fourteen to fifteen hundred pounds of payload in the Ridgeline mm -hmm. versus about a thousand pounds in the other midsizers. Yeah. And so here, here it goes, and it's underappreciated. You yes. can load a lot of stuff into it. And it's efficient. Remember, we put it up against, um, uh, actually, it was a Ford Ranger for efficiency, and it did remarkably well. The new 9-speed that they have is, it really does help that powertrain get the most out of every you know, pony that's there. So it's really efficient by comparison. It actually holds a lot in the bed. It can tow 5,000 pounds. That's probably one of its biggest downfalls because some of you guys just care about what's on paper. Um, and also, it just really isn't built for hardcore off-roading. I agree with that part. But most people don't go off-road. Uh, I mean, a huge majority of them don't. And for that majority who are going out and buying themselves pickup trucks that are heavy and unnecessary, this is a really, especially for cities, this is a really good alternative. And I'm gonna stand by that. That that front, or not frunk, it's a, a inside bed trunk. Yeah, yep. I love 99% of it. It's huge. Yeah, it's huge and it can hold a lot. The only issue I have with it personally is, and my wife pointed it out, when you open that up and you look inside, it's like, oh, that's where the spare tire is. And, and it's a donut too. It's a donut, but yeah. aside from that, it's like it's hard to get to if you have stuff in the bed. Yes, absolutely. So you gotta pull all the stuff out of the bed, open the thing. But that is my only problem with it. I think it's a fantastic pickup. So yeah, another one that's underappreciated. Yeah, and I don't think the Ridgeline will be ever a mid-sized truck sales leader. It's just not you know built in the same way. Uh, just the way it's marketed, right? Mm -hmm. But I think it should, it deserves more sale. Yeah, and it, every totally. year it's very consistent. Yeah, um, and it's slightly climbing now, actually. Yeah, it, yeah, a mild swelling, but it really does deserve a little bit more love. And there are a lot of other tr uh, pickups out there that are now using that formula on a smaller platform, and we'll talk about those a little bit later. Yes. Um, so we, we need to finish with two underrated, underappreciated pickups uh -huh. still. Uh, so let's talk about this one, the Nissan Titan. Yes. It's also on this list. Yes. yes. So three Nissan vehicles here. Pretty much everything Nissan builds <laughs> is on this list. Uh, so the Titan. So, yes, it was redesigned, what, 2017-ish, uh, updated. Then over, they recently updated um, it. 2020, a, a newer face. Right. Now uh, slightly, you know, different options uh, for 2021. Better interior. Uh, yeah, way better. Yeah. Uh, bigger screen, mm -hmm. nine-inch uh, infotainment screen. Still wonderful interior. Yeah, yeah comfortable, it's very comfortable. Comfortable, big. Whenever my wife gets into one, and we actually had a long-term 2018 Titan. Yes, we did. Uh, I thought that was a great truck. The yellow one. Yeah. She always comments, uh, she's like, oh, there's so many cup holders in here and so many like little cubbies, which is true. Right. It's one of the most kind of usable pickups. It's very user-friendly. Uh, of them all, yeah. And, you know, there's an irony here. They really should be priced lower because Nissan knows they're struggling in sales. Uh, only because they're struggling in sales. But it's a good truck. If you can even find a base model or close to base model, uh, they're wonderful. And then you get their Pro 4X package. Um, yeah, which is capable. I mean, it could use the Pro 4X could use a little bit more ground clearance. That's its biggest yeah. problem. Uh, uh, it, it could, but still really comfortable on-road and off-road ride. Has the rear locker, just like other the vehicles in the class, like we were talking about. Um, really good infotainment system that matches the off-road system so you can actually have cool views of the front wheels and what they're doing off-road. Um, really capable powertrain. See, unlike the Armada, this one has the nine-speed uh, automatic transmission mm -hmm. hooked up to that 5.6 liter V8. And both Andre and I are big fans of that powertrain. We love the sound it makes. We love the power it makes. It's not the most efficient, but it's much better with that nine-speed. Um, I believe you get maximum power if you use uh, super unleaded. Yeah, premium. Yeah, premium fuel. Uh, 400 horsepower. 400 horse. Yeah, yeah. Which is really good. And it's, it's a base engine too. Yes, exactly. When you it's buy just, the simplest Titan. That's, that's what, my that's point. What it is. You get everything right with from the start. You get that big V8. You get the transmission standard in the base model. There's no V6. Right. Yes. There's the. Um, the XD. We're not so even. The XD talking. is still there. Yeah. So some people. Uh, maybe confused. So at first, uh, what a couple of years ago, they discontinued the uh, V8 diesel. diesel. Yeah. The Cummins uh, five liter. So that went away. And then about a year ago or a few months ago, the XD was discontinued in Canada. Mm -hmm. So they're no longer selling the XD there. Yeah. Or I actually, think I think maybe almost all Titans are being discontinued in Canada. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the XD was kind of waning. 
because it's kind of a bigger version of the Titan. It's a it, bigger frame, beefier frame. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of, a, they called it the in-between truck. Yeah. It turns out it wasn't really, it didn't find a customer or as many customers as they hoped. Right. Um, and then here, on, it's still on sale mm-hmm. in the U.S., so you can still get an XD. They're calling it like the maximum towing package because you do get a bigger frame, uh, a longer wheelbase in many cases, and it's very stable. It's like a train when it pulls. We towed maximum weight with it, and it was absolutely fine. It was rock solid. And for those people out there who can find the XDs, in many cases, at least prior to the big high price hikes, they were being discounted or that you were able to get some really incredible deals. And they're what I like to call heavy duty half ton trucks. That's kind of my way of looking at the XD. Yeah. But across the line, I really do think that not many people look at these Nissan trucks. They're solid, they have just a fantastic powertrain. And you know, it's one of those where it's like, eh, you know, if you really don't want to go for these American brands with their big burly trucks, this is a really good option. Yeah, and they could still improve it. I mean, hopefully, uh, there's a rumor out there that for 2022 and beyond, the Titan is gone. Uh, There is no uh, base, official basis for this right now. No, we've been hearing Uh, that for uh, a while. um, Yeah, and there's actually actually some information that says Nissan is working on some off-road accessories Mm -hmm. for the coming year. So I don't think, personally, at least right now, that it's being discontinued, and I hope it's not. Um, And I also hope that they maybe add an optional powertrain. To it, you know, maybe uh, even a hybrid, maybe something. Maybe that 3.8 liter V6. Yeah, uh, something forward-looking mm-hmm. uh, to just entice more people to, right. to 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 come in there. And finally, if you're wondering why why is there a Chevy Colorado behind me, mm-hmm. if you're watching this, that's a ZR2, by the way. Yeah, the ZR2, and actually the the one behind me is a little bit modified, <laughs> highly modified too. But the point is, it's a ZR2 Colorado, and that's on this list. It's underappreciated. And, and over the last 12 months, it's kind of also my fault that we haven't, haven't had one, actually. Nice but going, it's, Andre. It's, it's, it's only my fault because they're gone. I mean, <laughs> they're not at dealers, yeah. and, they're, and they were not in the fleet of the manufacturer fleets. A lot of people aren't ordering them either. It's, it's just they're not. They're not a- and it's still there. It still exists. Yeah. Um, really great truck. We just com- we just talked about what the Gladiator Rubicons, mm-hmm. right? We talked about the Pro 4X uh, Frontiers. Right. Uh, some of the other Tacomas. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Gladiator, uh, I'm sorry, the ZR2 Colorado is still around. It's still the midsize truck with two lockers. Yep. Front and rear selectable. Front and rear. It's got great, well, not huge tires, but still very beefy Duratrax. I think they're quite good. It could be better, but they're quite good. Lots of armor. Lots of armor, including the the bison which armor, is boron, which is boron steel. It's the stuff that you could never break; just bend, and it pops back to its original shape. Right, um, and although that's a lot more expensive <laughs> to get that, um, the point is is that the ZR2, which I think still offers both a diesel and a gas engine, yeah, um, is a fantastic off roader, and at the same time on the highway. I think it drives way better than the Gladiator. It's much more comfortable. It's much more competent around town. And it just doesn't feel as long. Off-road, I can't think of another vehicle that can keep up with it when I take it to Moab, honestly. Uh, We did put it up against the Gladiator early when the Gladiator came out. And I would say that they, you know, tit for back and forth, they were very, very close. But if I had a preference between the two, it would be really hard to choose. The only reason I would choose a Gladiator is for a manual transmission, which does not come in the Colorado. I believe the Zero Colorado two. has the... Uh, I mean, it, it used to in the work trucks, and yeah. I think they discontinued They, they got rid of it yeah. with the four-cylinder. Yeah. That went away a while ago. They have an eight-speed auto. Yes. But in terms of just a really tough truck off-road and a really decent truck on-road, you, you really are hard-pressed to find a better truck in its class than that one. Yeah, uh, there are a couple of caveats here. Mm-hmm. Um, many of you have sent us emails or messages that the eight-speed in the Colorado is also sometimes problematic. Mm. Uh, you know, the Silverado, yeah, the, the version of that uh, transmission in Silverado is, heard about is, some is problematic. Every truck has a recall or an issue, right? Mm-hmm. It's just how many issues. And it's hard for us to do, you know, long-term testing. We haven't actually owned a ZR2 for long-term. No, we haven't. Um, so couple of caveats, but the great news is that it's being redesigned for the coming uh, generation. Yes, they're keeping it. Uh, so they're keeping it, and they're actually, uh, according to the spy images that we recently published on TFL Truck, mm-hmm. both YouTube uh, and our website, uh, tfltruck.com, 
Uh, they're increasing the tire size. They're being more serious with it, uh, more aggressive styling. So the ZR2 is not dead. It's coming back in a big way. That is fantastic news. And that means that, you know, Ford with their Tremor Ranger, which is a fantastic truck, they better look over their shoulder because Chevy's coming back with something that looks like it's going to be a hard hitter off-road. Yeah, and they're actually... Um, some of the spy images have the new ZR2 prototype next to a Ford Ranger Raptor mm -hmm. from overseas. Uh, GM is very serious about this. Yeah, it looks like uh, they're not playing around. And now the Silverado ZR2 is also coming next year. Right. So th that name, the ZR2 name, is still very strong. Right. Uh, and still here. Okay, so that concludes the list of underappreciated trucks. Once again, we want your feedback below. Let us know if we missed something or if you want to add something or if you want to comment on what we've been talking about. But there still are a few other trucks we haven't talked about yet. Yes. And by the way, we, we left off heavy duties here yes. because, first of all, uh, this year they're not updated. I mean, they're kind of soldiering on the yeah. way they are. Um, and also, I think they're basically all solid. Yeah. Uh, they're kind of middle of the road. You know, there is not some overhyped or underhyped. Uh, not really, trucks. no. So, no, so yeah. heavy duties are kind of not in this conversation right now. Okay. Uh, but there is some to be determined, like mm -hmm. you said. Um, and this first one, we really, you know, we were arguing about this. Where do we uh, put the Rivian R1T, mm. the new electric pickup? Is it overrated? Well, we didn't put it in the overrated category because we haven't touched it yet. That's right. We haven't driven it yet. Yes. Uh, we've seen it at shows. We did some interviews with uh, Rivian representatives. Uh, we are were impressed with it at the show. We haven't had it on the road or off road yet. We hope that's going to change uh, very soon. Yeah, we're talking with Rivian actually um, recently. Uh, I, I spoke to one of their representatives. Um, they they basically were telling me that uh, their truck is so pop you know popular with outlets right now that they didn't have quite one quite right now. But I'm hoping that's going to change and they could send it to us. Yes. And with that, we'll hopefully, it, it'll to be determined. We'll be able to see whether or not this truck is as good as advertised. We'll tow with it. We'll off-road with it. We'll do all that. Yeah. And by the way, this week also Rivian went public. They're now a publicly traded company. Mm -hmm. uh, they made kind of a splash their first day. And uh, which is another topic, I think, for another show. That's for a different show. <laughs> um, but yeah, they you know, they're doing quite well. And I think they're quite happy. Hopefully, uh, people will kind of mellow out, and then we'll finally get it, because we do the hardest testing out there. I honestly will challenge any of those networks out there to come close to our yeah. gauntlet. And, and, our and nobody still, nobody, even though some people already t tested it and driven it, yeah. uh, nobody has, un, you know, uh, an independent organization like us, nobody has told with it nope. yet. I know Rivian told with it, you know, during their development processes, yeah. but uh, no outlet other than Rivian has done it yet. Yeah, so I mean, that's what we do. We do towing, so we're really curious to see how that truck will perform, which is why it's on the TBD list. Let's move on to the next one, which we have driven off-road, we have towed with lightly, but we haven't yet put it on the Ike, and that would be the, um, well, actually we have put it on the Ike, the Santa Cruz. No, we, we did not, because oh, it didn't it have didn't a have, hitch. That's right. It came right. without a hitch. Yeah. And I don't think that was a mistake, by the way, um, <laughs> because some other vehicles have showed up with to us without a hitch. I almost think it's extra effort to get rid of the hitch to prevent us from using it. For well, towing. some people had hitch shortages, which, mm -hmm. which surprised me. But who knows? So the Hyundai Santa Cruz is, is one, mm -hmm. and it's in this new compact segment. Mm -hmm. They're calling it the activity vehicle or a sport activity yeah. uh, vehicle. I still call but, them a crossover but pickup. But it's a little crossover pickup. It has a bed, uh, mm -hmm. which is almost, what, just over four feet long. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's quite nice, actually. The interior is nice. It's, it's a, um, it drives like a, like a crossover, yeah. and it's very comfortable. And actually has – we had the turbo with the dual clutch – and I think moved, it scooted. But off-road, it showed that it had a weakness, and that was the transmission can overheat when you abuse it off-road. So we're hoping in the future... Or just drive it off-road. Yeah, when you're just driving it off-road. Yeah. In the future, we will be getting the slightly lower version of that, which has the regular non-turbo engine and a regular transmission, not Automatic. a dual clutch. Yes. Right. And we're going to do towing and stuff like that with that one as well. So that's why it's kind of on the TBD list, because we haven't really gone through the whole thing with it yet. Yeah, and the same goes for the Ford Maverick. That is correct. Uh, it's, it's in the same class, uh, new compact pickup uh, class. Uh, Ford Maverick, I went to the uh, initial event, mm -hmm. as you may know. 
Um, I, I had a chance to tow um, a trailer with it. I uh, hauled some payload with it. I drove uh, uh, around this little uh, loop that mm -hmm. they provided. But still, you know, that was like half a day. Well, it's a controlled we, environment. Yeah. You really don't get a chance to really get it to stretch its legs. And we're finally getting it actually this week. Yep. And we'll, we'll be putting it through its paces in a big way. Uh, I gauntlet. Oh, yeah. Um, Off-roading when oh, yeah. we get an all-wheel drive version. Yeah. We're not getting uh, the, the hybrid yet. Uh, well, actually, the one we're getting is a hybrid. Oh, it is a hybrid. And, and it's only uh, front-wheel drive. Yeah. So we're not taking yeah. that uh, to really beat it up. Well, we're still going to tow with it. Yeah, tow it, yeah, but yeah. we're not going to take it, uh, you know, up a uh, cliffhanger. No, because it's two-wheel drive. <laughs> exactly. I mean, we could, but well, we, I would. we would damage it. Well, well, uh, we anyway, know. so it's on, still on the TBD list. Uh, I think, uh, well, we'll see which way it swings. The cool thing about that vehicle, and I can't contain my enthusiasm for the Maverick. I think it's, I haven't even touched one yet. But the idea that the least expensive hybrid you can buy from Ford is that vehicle. And it's also the least expensive vehicle available at Ford right now. Yes. If you can get one at the base price. And it seats five people and it has a bend. Yes. Well, yeah. and, just, and it gets fantastic fuel mileage. So there's a lot to love about this thing. And we're going to, we are, it snow's just starting to stick to the mountains. So who knows? Maybe we'll even take it through a little bit of snow. Yeah, exactly. And the other vehicle on this list uh, that's coming imminently mm. is the GMC Hummer EV truck. Uh, Roman drove it at a uh, Proving Grounds controlled environment. Yeah, once again, controlled environment. Uh, controlled environment. Uh, you and I haven't really driven or, or even passengered in one. I wasn't even allowed to smell one, and I tried to sniff it, and they, they, they wouldn't wow. let me. Yeah, it was, yes. it was bad. Uh, so it's still on the TBD list, and we're not talking about some of the other trucks like the new Tundra yet. Yeah. Because, for the same reason, because we haven't really had an extended time time with one right basically. so so that the list could be rather extensive in terms of the vehicles that are to be discovered or to to be discussed i guess in this case but we definitely are looking at these trucks and just thinking to ourselves which ones are loved and which ones should be loved and that's kind of the whole thing that's how it all boils down to and we want your perspective what do you guys think about this list and also maybe a list that you want to come up with with vehicles that perhaps deserve a little bit more love or perhaps deserve less yeah right? Yeah, let us know if you would reorganize this list and, and how, how. Yeah, so. or how wrong are we? Uh, yeah. you know, by I'm all sure means, you'll let us, let us know. know how wrong we <laughs> oh, are. Oh, well, I'm sure of it. So, guys, we do appreciate you joining us. Remember, uh, thank you for your support, and don't forget to put your comments below. Yeah, and also tfl-studios.com is our site. We, you can make it a link, a web app on your phone. Mm -hmm. It's where you can find all TFL stuff because we do have four websites. And seven channels. Seven channels and two podcasts because we also have a car-related podcast. <laughs> That's right. Um, so tfl-studios.com is where you can find all of it in this one place. Yep. Right there. Um, and uh, as always, you can join us here um, either listening or watching us on TFL Talk. All right, guys. Well, we hope you have a wonderful week. Take care. We'll talk to you next time. Yes. <laughs>